Times are tough, so save time and money by skipping business trips and using GoToMeeting. Visit GoToMeeting.com slash techpodcast and get 30 days for free. Net neutrality is one of those subjects that until now we weren't really clear on how the government was going to move. Now we're hearing that the chairman of the FCC is poised to make a speech to essentially endorse the principle of open internet, requiring that all data traffic be transmitted equally across the internet without uh, you know, speed bumps or anything of that nature. What does this actually mean for people who would benefit from this legislation? To talk about that, we bring in Abner Ronan, who's CEO of Boxy. Abner, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So, uh, net neutrality in brief, I mean, it's basically the principle that all data traffic should be treated similar. There shouldn't be specific tiers for uh, speed and whatnot. What's, how does Boxy fit into net neutrality for people who might not be familiar? So we don't have any you know, special position, I think, in the marketplace, besides the fact that uh, we do offer a service that may be competing with some of uh, the services that are offered by broadband providers, and in that regard may be at risk of discrimination. But uh, that's not the case today. We have not, uh, to our knowledge, been discriminated against. You know, there's been cases in the voice over IP market where uh, applications such as Skype uh, were blocked, whether it's on mobile uh, broadband networks or even wireline broadband networks. So what's, um, what's sort of changed in, you know, since you read the speech and since Boxy kind of prepared the statement on the Boxy blog, you know, what is there, uh, I mean, what's kind of your reaction to the changes? Uh, you know, I think it's a bold move by the administration and I think, um, you know, they're laying out their plan in advance. They're supposed to, uh, I think, formally announce it in uh, February, the, broad, the national broadband plan. And this is kind of uh, setting expectations and also asking for, um, for feedback. So we're very excited. Um, we think that the, the two new principles that they introduced, non-discrimination and transparency, are very important. And we're looking forward to seeing the detail of the proposed uh, ruling. And um, it seems like they're going on in the right direction as far as we're concerned. So some people might say that this causes a dangerous precedent, though, in that, you know, people, this private networks essentially, uh, you know, will have some government intervention, even though it's to keep them more open. You know, some people, maybe, you know, broadband providers in the past have liked to have control over these networks that they've built out. How do you kind of respond to those critics who say that you know, this is just a lot more government intervention that might not necessarily be ap appropriate? So the question is really what's going to be, um, what, what are going to be those, uh, those rules. I hope that they keep them uh, very, very basic and uh, very savvy so it doesn't uh, turn into government uh, really uh, taking over the internet. I don't think that's the intention even though some people want to paint it and as, um, as such. I, I think the reality is that um, there are already cracks in the concept of letting the market um, beside this issue of open internet, there's, as I mentioned, there's cases where voice over IP applications were blocked, um, where you know peer-to-peer -peer, uh, protocols that were used for legitimate uh, purposes were blocked, where political speech was blocked. So there's already cases where um, network operators took advantage of their position, and I think it is important to to prevent it. So you know, we say you, you mentioned that this is sort of leading up to February and setting expectations. So now are your expectations essentially that, you know, people, the government will ha have to enforce regulations of, uh, you know, people not being able to charge for specific access to things. Like how does, how does this sort of limit? I mean, is something like ESPN 360 where, you know, ESPN makes exclusive deals with broadband providers to get their service on there. Do you think that that's, you know, that's sort of things that will be banned? Or do you think that, you know, this is more of preventing specific applications to be used and things like that? No, I don't think it, um, it, it has anything to do with, uh, with the SPN 360. Um, it does mean that uh, the network operator would not be able to come to Boxy or MySpace or YouTube or Google and say, if you want users to access your, um, your service um, in full speed, you'll have to pay extra. And I think that that's, that's very positive. You know, content providers doing deals with, uh, with ISPs to provide their content to their subscribers, I don't, I don't think that's going to go away. Okay, cool. That's a good distinction to take note. So this is a specific, uh, you know, not letting people speed limit on the internet, as it were. Uh, Abner, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Abner Ronan, who's CEO of Boxy. Uh, you can catch them over at boxy.tv or their blog is at blog.boxy.tv. And of course, we'll have links to all the information at techv.com and you can read their official response as well as links to uh, the broadband debate at large. 
I'm Randall Bennett, and uh, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. We're also streaming live now, so you can check us out at techv.com slash live for any time we have live content. See you later.